G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Ad Smashes Forbies. This is one of our how-to videos. Today, we'll be hooking up these two spotties. Yes, I know this isn't a four-wheel drive, but this is just to show you how to do your negatively switched spotties. So first things first, you're obviously gonna get yourself a set of spotties. Sometimes these come with wiring harnesses. Nine times out of 10, the wiring harness for these bad boys will be for positively switched cars. Most late Japanese cars that I know of are negatively switched. You can reverse the polarity in the relays on those kits, but you end up with a lot of excess wiring and it's cheap and easy enough to make your own. So the gear you're gonna need is, you're gonna need some thick gauge cable from your battery to your input of your fuse. Then from your fuse, you're gonna run that thicker cable to the input of the relay. So here I'm using some 25 amp rated cable. That's plenty enough for these set of spotties. Obviously if you've got bigger spotties, like on the Hilux, I've got the big um, nine inch HDX light forces. There I'll jump up to a 30 amp, just because of the HIDs and LEDs that I've got on coming on together. Pull that little bit more. And really, if you can go bigger and you can fit it, do it. But using a relay, also, it minimizes how much of the bigger cable you use, uh, but we'll get into that a little bit later. You're gonna need a good quality fuse. This is a inline blade fuse. These are quite good. Um, a lot of people do say that these are high resistance point, which, don't get me wrong, they can be, they are. Um, I tend to use these, these are MIDI fuses. I use those on my bigger stuff, like my dual battery system and all that. But for this purpose here, for these little spotties, these are perfectly fine, 100% fine. You're also gonna need a switch. This is a rocker switch. You're only gonna need three, a three pin switch, but you can use these as well. These are good. You're gonna need some smaller cable. This is 15 amp. Um, it all depends on the draw of these spotties. This is fine for these spotties though. You need your relay. I call this sparrow wrap, self-closing braided wrap. This stuff's really good. It just neatens the job up. Um, I think it makes for a very professional install. You need some split auto curry. You need some blade blade crimps. They'll be going onto your relay. Various sizes it depends on your battery terminals and your lugs. Various sizes of um, these ring terminals. Lacky tape's very handy. Um, some heat shrink. And this is just a little bit of twin core 15 amp cable. Now the tools you're gonna need, needle nose pliers, very handy. Especially like on these smaller cars. A file, only when the switches don't gonna fit. It's very good, just go very soft on the plastic. One of those pliers with side cutters in them and or side cutters, but I just use these because they've got the side cutters in, in them. This screwdriver here, I use for piercing existing glands. Um, when we go through the firewall, you don't really want to be doing extra holes in your firewall. Um, you don't know, when you're drilling into your firewall, you don't know what you're going to drill into the other side. Some people may say, oh yeah, I know, but I mean, I've done it before, but I have, I've been lucky that I haven't hit anything and I've been able to get access and have a look. But sometimes I've just winged it and I've been lucky, but use grommets where you can. Um, if not, drill a hole and put put another grommet or a gland in. These Black Panther scissors are very good. They're very sharp. They're good for cutting the heat shrink and making it nice and neat. A good, reliable multimeter is very handy for checking for dead and also checking for faults. Plug crimper, very good, very handy and neat if you're gonna use these crimps. Little jet lighter, very handy for shrinking down your heat shrink and also use it with the solder. So I do solder joints. Um, a lot of people, again, disagree. They do inline joints, inline crimps, which is good. I do that some, sometimes, but for this car, this car's not, never gonna go off-road. It's gonna stay on road. Um, again, with it's like linked back to that fuse. Most people think it's a high heat source, but if you can solder well and competent, then there's no reason why you shouldn't be using solder. If you are using a four-wheel drive, I probably would go the inline crimps, but as long as you double crimp, because that's really gonna get a good connection. And it's just that least resistance and less heat being put into the cable itself. And here I've got a snake, but you can use any little bit of, 
you know, you can use a wire coat hanger. I use this for poking through, you know, little gaps, but I especially use this little sharp end here for poking through the grommets. And then I follow through with the, the screwdriver there. And then I tape to the snake to pull my wires through into the cab. So this would be our wiring diagram for our negatively switched spotties. So I always usually start at my spotties. I always start at the dead end first. A lot of guys will tell you to you know, wire your battery, but that's your power source. So you want to keep it dead for as long as possible. So what you're going to do, your spotties usually come with a Deutsch plug, which are very good. But if they come, you know, hard wire, it doesn't matter. All this is going to apply. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to get yourself a relay. I just use horn relays. I get them from JCAR. They're only like $6.95, the cheap has. Um, but they have pin 87A and 87. This is a normally open relay. We're not going to be using 87A. You can get relays that have both 87 and 87, and they are joined internally, which if you can find those relays, those are good. But all I do is I join my spotties at pin 87, and I double lug them. So what you're going to do is you're going to come from your spotties. So you're active. Your spotties, it's just going to come up to 87. I should say positive, sorry. So you're going to go to pin 87, of your relay. In your negative, you can take it back to the negative of the battery if you like, but if it's closer, your negative, just take it to a point on the frame. That could be a bolt, could be anything. Anything metal, if it's closer, I wouldn't bother running cable all the way back. If you really want to though, and you know, you definitely know if you run it back to your main battery negative, you know that's going to be your source of your negative. So that is your most reliable source. This is how I do it. What we want to do in our relay as well, we want to bridge out a power supply and 85. So we're just going to do a jumper wire from 30 to 85. Then what we're going to do from our pin 86 in our relay, we want to go to our switch. From our switch, we then want to tap into our high beam. We also, on one pin of our switch, we'd want to ground it. Just like we did with the spotties here with the bolt, any bolt that's touching metal, any earth, you may even be able to find an earth within the cab. After all that's done, I then like to wire back from my power going into my relay to my fuse and then out of my fuse to my battery. All this factory headlight dip switch stuff, that's already done. That's why I've already drawn that in. But this is essentially how your factory headlight switch works. On the low beam there, flicks it to on. When you flick your high beam on, flicks that to on. And there goes our trigger when our switch is on. So the first thing you guys are going to want to do is you're going to want to locate where all your things are running. So you've got your spotties, they're going to be mounted on this nudge bar here. They run in behind there. There's a little panel here and they run in behind the headlight. See, we've got them in auto curry. That's just going to, you know, protect the cables from heat. Always need protection. Just got it cable tied there. Following the main loom, it's nice and neat. This is our main fuse panel, our main fuse box in the engine bay. So we've just put our relay there. Bolts are nicely, there was already a hole there. You can put these anywhere. These can go absolutely anywhere. We just come to our switch here, which is inside the cab. So like I said before, we started the spotties. We've wired, these came with little Deutsch plugs. These are great. They are quite easy to um, install and make up yourselves if you've got the tools. I will do a video on that a bit later on. Um, but these came with it, so I just went with it. All I had to do was extend it, so we did solder joints. And we ran them to pin 87. So all, that, all they're running from is from the spotties, through the car, up to our relay, and they go to pin 87, which are these two here. This is pin 87 here. From there, these are the earths 
all the negatives from the spotties, they run to the earth point. So bang, spotties are wired, done, easy. Then from there, this one here, pin 86, this goes back to our switch. So this runs up along there, joins up to these ones here. This is that cable that hasn't got the Cori on it yet that I'm gonna show you how to put it on. This cable here also runs back to our switch. That goes back to that pair there. But this one hooks in to the high beam. So tapping into your high beam, you're not gonna have a lot of length here. That's why this has got tape and no heat shrink on it. You could get heat shrink on it if you cut that end there and that end there and then joined a little piece in between but you just don't have the length the factory they're not designed for adding in spotlights they just want to run the minimum as possible so electrical tape's fine here it's got the it's got the same properties of heat shrink it's an insulation tape so it's 100 percent fine to use so you're just going to want to tap into your high beam find out which your high beam is on your car nine times out of ten toyotas it's going to be yellow and red a relay in a car means a switching circuit does not require a high current rated switch or cable um, relays can be positioned anywhere in the vehicle to provide efficient power transfer to the electrical accessory you are controlling and relays are perfect controlling many circuits in a car like headlights this is why you're going to need it for here because you're switching between two different switches um, your headlight dip switch and your manual override switch. A relay is an electrically operated switch. They commonly use a coil to operate their internal mechanical switching mechanism or their contacts. And when a relay contact is open, this will switch the power on for a circuit when the coil is activated. A common myth about relays is people think that they prevent fire. They don't. What's going to prevent the fire is having good connections, the right gear for the job, aka the right amp rating, on a professional install.